It's about the heart of ministry. Everybody say the heart of ministry. Say what me say the heart of ministry. Everything that does not have a heart dies. Everything about you today comes from your heart. Out of the heart proceed what? The issues of what? Life. Sometimes we, sometimes we hear some people say something. You say, Bye? You have heart? Hello? Hi. When they do something, you say, Hi, Kai. You get heart at all? Because out of the heart proceeds what? The issues of life. Understand, when I talk about you know, the heart of ministry, I'm saying is that ministry is all about serving. Ministry is all about serving. And through serving, you capture the heart of God. Are you following me? How many of you want to capture the how many of you want, really want to capture God's heart? It's not in tongues. It's not in dancing. It's not even in prayer. It is in serving. If you are clapping, clap, clap, give us a bit. okay. Ministry is all about serving. Amen? In other words, I say, ministry is serving and not being served. Hello? Can we talk tonight? Ministry is about serving, not being served. Ministry is not about being served. It is about serving. Say neighbor, ministry is about serving and not being served. There's a lot to take away there. Amen? Amen? Therefore, what does that mean to us as a church, as believers, as Christians, as, as departmental heads, as 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 pastors, what does that mean? Write this down. Serving is not a waste of time. Serving is not a waste of time. Everybody say after me. Serving is not a waste of time. A lot of us today, we are not coming into our full potential. Because many of us here, we have not learned how to serve and serve adequately. Mm. Are you following me? Are you following me? So, serving is not a waste of time. Now, Jesus, remember <clears throat> the story in the book of John, I will read it later. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Do you remember that? Say neighbor, neighbor. Serving, serving is not a waste of time. time. Elisha served Elijah for four and a half years. Guess what? After Elijah was removed from the scene, Elisha's ministry blossomed immediately. Say neighbor, Serving is not a waste of time. Are you following me? Are you following me? So you can see through some of these things I'm sharing with you tonight. Elisha's ministry exploded immediately. Joshua served Moses. Remember that? Numbers 11 verse 28. In, in uh, Acts 16 verse 104, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 23, Timothy and Titus served Apostle Paul. Mm. Why are you serving a man? I'm sure people must have told you that. Hello? Come on, let's talk tonight. This is a family talk. 
People have told you, why serving a man? Joshua served Moses. Timothy and Silas, sorry, Timothy and uh, um, Titus, they served Apostle Paul. Amen? Jesus had 12 disciples. Now, some of you think you are too close, smart. Say, neighbor, serving, you capture God's heart. In serving, you capture God's heart. Someone say, Amen. Amen. Now, watch this. David himself served King Saul. Okay, follow me now. I'm just giving you. David served King Saul. Is that not so? Is that not so? Yes. Even though Saul was a difficult leader. Some of you think, some of you think I'm hard. Check out King Saul. Even though David served him meticulously, yet Saul wanted David's head. Hello? Say neighbor. In serving, you capture God's heart. Not in tongues. Not in warfare prayer. It is in serving. Somebody say, I hear you. So, David served King Saul, even though King Saul was a hard man. Many of you, right now, some of you have called me hard man. Hello? Oh, don't, 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 don't make your face like that, man. You said it. You said it. This man, nobody can please him. Hello. Hello. Children of God, hello. I must know that you are alive and well. When you get thirsty, drink some water or drink your water and mind your business. You will get that tomorrow. Some of you are too spiritual. Like you don't hear nothing at all. Only Jesus is here in the morning and afternoon. Drink your water, my business. But the point I'm going, ladies and gentlemen, is this quickly. Is that even though David saved King Saul, and King Saul was a hard man to please, but David maintained David stayed faithful all the way to the end of his life. Slap it and say, how faithful are you? No, 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 no. Look at somebody again. Say, how faithful are you? We have today, Pastor Let, a lot of complaining believers. Me able, me able, me able, me able, me able. Me able. So why are you able? Unwilling. Eh? Eh? Unwilling. Me unwilling. What? What is that? Me able. We gotta use the term for them because this unwilling story there is that's a long grammar, big grammar. Me able. It's our colloquial type of language. If you're watching me, me, me able. <laughs> Someone said, I hear you. So, so what, what am I saying here is this. Watch this now. If you watch all those that served, they became successful. <laughs> Check your Bible. They were successful. Because Why? Serving helps you to lay the proper foundation to avoid pitfalls later in life. What to do in the house of God will take you through your life. Am I helping somebody tonight? 
So you will see, as I continue to elaborate for, for you, is that one of the pitfalls for the collapse of King Saul's reign was that he was that he never served nobody. Check your Bible. One, one of the main reasons why King Saul reign collapsed quickly was because King Saul never served nobody. He didn't have the chance to serve nobody because why? He was the first king in Israel. So some of you didn't get that now. No, so I'm teaching more than you shouting now. King Saul was the first king in Israel. He didn't serve nobody. I, I, I don't know if somebody hit it. Are you hearing me? Remember, see, he was the first king. Amen? Amen? He did not have the heart of God, although he started with a humble spirit. You cannot capture God's heart without serving. He was only put there because they wanted a king. So God gave him a king. But he didn't serve nobody. So he started with a humbleness. Okay. But he had no heart for God. Hello. He lost focus on God while focusing on his empire. Now, bring that to you today. Is that many of us, we have lost focus on God. We are now focusing on position, on title, on visibility. If I'm not seen in the lamb light, which means I am doing nothing. I, I don't know if somebody's hearing me tonight. Amen? Therefore, as we serve, we are to seek the heart of God and not his hand. Serving helps you to capture the heart, the heart of God. As you serve, please do not look for God's hand. Look for God's heart. The hand of God Speaks of power. The, the heart of God speaks about your attitude. Somebody's not hearing me. The heart of God, when I say the heart of God, your attitude, and then it speaks about God's character. What is the character of God? God is lawyer. God is faithful. He's ever present. So as I hear you. These are just a few character of God. So, say neighbor, as you are serving, stop looking for God's hand and look for God's heart. Because the hand of God, say because the hand of God speaks of power. But the heart of God speaks of character. Give God some praise, somebody. So what is happening is that the church, all we want is power. 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 But we don't understand character. Hello. You get quiet on me now. I'm talking good tonight. I said I'm talking good tonight. So, in other words, as I come to an end, is that we have now confused ambition and vision. Some leaders, some pastors, some, some, lead, some members, we have confused ambition and vision. Can I break the two down for you? So you can understand where we are going as a church. I'm going to say Amen. What is ambition? Ambition is a strong desire to become recognized by doing something significant. That's ambition. I'll say it one more time. Ambition is a strong desire. Somebody say strong. Not just desire, but a strong desire to become recognized. 
by doing something that is significant. Someone say amen. For example, let me give an example. If someone wants to fulfill an ambition, okay, that there's so much desire, they'll be fully concerned or chiefly concerned with position. All they are concerned is the title and the position they want to achieve. They don't care how they get there, who they push away from, who they step upon, but all they are doing is to get there. Hello? So the church is filled with ambitious people. But they don't have the vision for the church. Can I talk to you from my heart tonight? So we have a strong desire to be recognized by doing something that is what? Significant. Amen? So they, this, this, group, this group, they don't care by which means they achieve that position. So people don't mind to run you down just to make sure that they look good. And it's happening within departments and ministries. So if I can prove that that leader is not capable, then me, I'm next in line. That devil is a liar. Hello? But vision, I would say vision. Say vision. Say vision. Vision is a picture of the future. Again, vision is a picture of the future. It's, it's, it's also a direction or a goal that everyone is working towards. I want to say that one, one more time so you can capture it. So again, vision is a picture of the future. It also means a direction, amen, or a goal that everyone, not some people, everyone is working towards. Mm. Hello? Hello? However, there is a difference in attitude and motivation when trying to fulfill a vision. The, the, the difference between ambition and a vision is the attitude and motivation. What is motivating you towards that vision? And how is your attitude towards that vision? Remember I said ambition is a strong desire. You don't care who, how, how you get there. And it's happening, listen, apart from church, it's happening so much in places of work. It's happening. A sister of recent from Bobby's had just been promoted as a head teacher. She went to the school. After she left the uh, the letter on the desk and, and, and the person that was there, the advertising before, okay, that, they would just keep that person in there. So the person saw it, flash it now and start to send it to different heads uh, that she's not qualified to be. Are you following me, somebody? Because she, she thought she could have been the person D. Amen? Amen? So, if you read, can, can someone help me? If you read 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31. See if you can help me find it. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31. We're talking about ambition and vision. Because here, in this scripture, we see 
that Paul stressed it does not matter how important we are in church. What matters is that we all work together to achieve the vision that God has for his kingdom. Somebody say amen. amen. First Corinthians 12 verse 31 is that what matters in church is that all of us, we are working together, okay? It says, now eagerly desire the greatest, the greater gift, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we see again, remember, you know, I told you, if you go and read the book of John and the book of Mark, the account where Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. What happened there? What happened there? Before Jesus did that, they were arguing among themselves who was the greatest in the kingdom. It's happening in churches today. Leaders are competing with leaders. Pastors with pastors. Hello? Who is the greatest? Who is the best? Who can preach better? Who can kill demons better? Nobody's competing. Who can sweep better? Then I want to hold the microphone. Who can preach better? The devil is a liar. Amen? So, they were arguing. They were arguing. They were arguing among themselves. Who is the greatest? So, Jesus got up and did what? He washed their feet. Now, what was he telling them? What was he communicating to them as their pastor? He was their pastor. So, he said to them, he was simply saying, he was demonstrating that the vision, ever said the vision, the vision of the kingdom was more important than your individual ambition. Say, neighbor, the vision of the ministry is more important than your individual ambition. Question. Question. Before I take my seat, question. How do we change our hearts from ambition to a unified vision. How do we change our hearts from ambition to a unified vision? Number one, repent. Uh oh. Uh oh. Repent. Huh? Say, neighbor, we need to repent. All of us need to repent. If you observe, if you, if you examine your heart today, you discover there's some level of ambition that is driving you, not the vision. Hmm. Some pastors here, some leaders here, what is driving you is not the vision. It's your personal ambition. The reason why I'm saying this right now, you need to check your heart. Repent. We all need to repent. It means to change focus. The word repent means to change what? Focus. To change focus. Now watch this. Isaiah 1 verse 19 to 20. I always love, I read that scripture every time I told, I, listen. Isaiah 1 verse 19 to 20. Very powerful text that changed my life. Changed my life. I came here over 20 something years ago. This is over 25 years ago. My life changed. That scripture, that one scripture. Never forget. Never forget. Again, do we have the scripture? Isaiah 1 verse 19 to 20. I want to read. Bible says, if you are willing and obedient. Now watch that. 
Most times I spoke about obedience, I didn't speak about the willing part. If you are willing and obedient, you shall what? Eat the good of the land. Because why? Willingness or being willing speaks of your attitude. Mm. Mm. Obedience speaks of your action. But willingness speaks of your attitude. And a lot of us today, we have the wrong attitude. That's the reason why we are not eating the good of the land. Mm. Look at verse 20 of that same scripture. Verse 20 says what? Hmm? Says what? But if you refuse and rebel, I said, are you a rebel? Are you a Taliban? Come on, come on, say, hey, neighbor, say, neighbor. Say, neighbor. Are you a Taliban? Come on, we got guy named Taliban. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Someone say, amen. amen. So, the first thing we need to repent. Amen. We need to become willing and obedient to the vision. Amen. Number two, we need to realize that our significance does not come from what we are, but whose we are. We need to realize that our significance does not come from what we are, but whose we are. Are you following me, somebody? It means being a child of God, being children of God, that what makes a difference. Not what we are, but whose we are. Somebody say amen. And thirdly, we need to ask God to give us a vision of his kingdom. Because today, a lot of us, we are not serving well because we don't have the vision. You can't, you can't serve a vision you don't know. I want to challenge you tonight. Ask yourself, am I serving correctly? Do I understand the vision of the ministry? Somebody say amen. Lastly, we need to become a love servant of the church. Love servant. Love servant of what? The church. Amen. Because love is the most, love is the most excellent way to operate in your spiritual giftings and calling. One of the ways to experience God in a powerful way is by showing love. Amen? That's to say, Christ loved the church enough to die for her. Okay. How much do you love this church? To die for the church. Hello, don't, don't say me. <laughs> don't say me, me. No, it's okay. I'm just giving you this to, to go and chew. Christ loved the church so much that what? He died for the church. We got people in church today, they are willing to destroy the church. Yeah, they say they love the church. It's our church. But they are willing to destroy the church at any given time because of our selfish ambition. Somebody say, I hear you. So Jesus showed us this kind of love. Jesus showed us that kind of love when he gave his life. So again, remember, you can't say you love the church 
and you are destroying the church. See, real love does not quit. <laughs> I, put, I give you that. Real love does not quit. It's fake love. Chinese love. Pupu love is the one that is quit. Before thing happen, I go on. But when there's a genuine love, real love does not quit. Give God some praise, somebody. So, what I was trying to share with you tonight is to come to make you. I want to make sure that you capture the heart of God. Everyone that served their ministry became successful. People don't understand. You see me? You see me? Ada Abrams, she could tell you. I don't know why uh, Pastor Raymond is not here because I told him to be here tonight. She would tell you. I served. Even when I didn't like the treatment. I was still serving. I was a humble servant to the end. Even though things might be against me, I showed that love. I can tell you one experience I had. I had made up my mind at that time to go and uh, because to start because I felt the Lord was pushing me in a certain direction. And I went to my then bishop and I told him my vision and everything and we agreed that it was good. I went to the station, I bought the airtime, got people to sponsor the program, everything was not good. Just before the program was to take off, two weeks out, I went back to, the, to my bishop and said, I'm about to start the program in the next two weeks. I need you to just give me your blessing, as we have discussed before. And then he said to me, plans have changed. Plans have changed. I said, okay, plans have changed. I said, right. That they had an elders meeting, a board meeting, and the elders did not agree with the plan. And so, I will have to drop it. I didn't say, I didn't question the reason why. Did they pay me? Yes, they paid me, but I didn't show it. I just said, if that is this, no problem, I will go and take it off. And I went quietly and I took it off and I took it off. Without no noise, without nothing. But this is me today, standing here. I'm showing you something here. This is, these are spiritual matters. They are weighty matters. When you learn how to serve, you will capture the heart of God. May God bless us all. May God impart his wisdom into us. May God unite us as a, as a family. May God destroy the spirit of uh, this self-ambition. Help us to pursue and go after the vision of the ministry. That we all can rise to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, somebody say, Amen. 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 Clap your hands and give God some praise. Are you blessed tonight? This is the